Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be going over some basic steps you can take to help ensure that your Unraid server is secure from malicious actors and help better protect it from possibly being accessed by someone you don't want to have access to your server or the data on it. For this video, I will be using version 6.9.1, but the same steps can be taken on a more recent version of Unraid. The settings may just be in a different location or may look a little different. Please do keep in mind that while I will be covering a few simple things you can do to help secure your Unraid server, doing them does not guarantee someone still won't be able to access your server or its data. There are also other more advanced things you can do to help further protect your Unraid server, but I will not be going over these in this video. If there was something that I didn't cover, make sure to let me know in the comments below so that others can see your suggestions. The first thing you'll want to do if you haven't already is configure a strong password for the root account. This is important because by default, the account does not have a password assigned to it. That means if someone can browse to your server, they are able to access it and can make any changes they want to it. To do this, click on the Users tab at the top of the page and then click on the root account. From here, you'll need to enter your password here twice. While two people could sit in a room and argue until the end of time on what a strong password is, the basic rule of thumb for any password is that it is unique between sites, is at least 8 characters long, contains upper, lower, numeric, and special characters, and is not a dictionary word. I personally recommend using passwords that are at least 12 to 14 characters long and contain at least two different special characters and two numeric characters that are not next to each other on the keyboard. If you are using a password manager, then there is no reason not to use it for your Unraid server as well. Once you decide on your password and enter it twice, you can click on change to update it. This will log you out of your current session and you will have to re-log in, but this time with your new password. This step is very important, because again, without doing so, anyone who can browse to your Unraid server would be able to easily log in and make changes to it or delete your data. Next, let's disable a few services that are not needed. This will include turning off Telnet, FTP, and SSH if you don't think you'll need it. To do this, first go to Settings. Then under System Settings, click on Management Access. From here, find Use Telnet and set this option to No. An optional step here would be to disable SSH if you're not using it. This isn't necessary to do, but if you know you don't use it and don't plan on ever using it, you can consider turning off SSH as well. Take note that doing so will make troubleshooting harder if you're not able to access Unraid from the GUI for some reason. For me, I know I don't need SSH, so I will be turning it off. With at least use Telnet set to no, click on apply to save the changes. Let's now navigate back to the settings tab, and under the network services section, click on FTP server. Here you can set FTP server to disabled, and click apply to turn off the service if you know you won't be using it. If you do need some type of file transfer protocol service, I do recommend looking into something that would be a bit more secure than FTP. Let's now turn our attention to setting up notifications for Unraid. These settings will also be found under the Settings tab and are located under User Preferences. Here you can make changes to how much information is displayed in notifications, and a few formatting settings for your notifications. What we will want to do here is enable notifications for a few different things that Unraid can check for. This includes Unraid OS updates, plugin updates, and Docker updates. For these settings, you can set them from once a month all the way up to four times a day. For me, I like to have them set to check once a day. I also recommend setting Array Status notifications to once a day as well. This notification will send an update letting you know the status of your array at the same time. So if you end up not receiving a notification at a time you'd expect, then you know something is wrong with your Unraid server and you should check it out. These are important for keeping your server secure because staying up to date for your operating system and different plugins or containers you may be running to help close any possible bugs or vulnerabilities that may be discovered. By staying up to date, you'll be running with the latest security fixes installed. With the notifications set up for the frequency you want, you'll have the option for how these notifications are sent. You can have them sent via the browser window, through an email, or through one of the several available agents that can be configured. I personally just use browser and email, but there's a very large selection of different agents you can choose from. The reason to not just use browser is you have to be logged into your Unraid server to get those notifications. Whereas with an email or agent notification, you'll get it on your phone. I won't be going over how to set up email or any agents in this video, as there are a lot for both. Let's scroll back to the top to make sure our notification settings are as we want them and click on apply to save them. The next step we will be going over is turning off sharing for the USB drive that is used to run the Unraid operating system. By default, this sharing is turned on, which means again, anyone who can get to your server will have access to this as a network share and can make changes to it and the files on it. To fix this issue, go to main if you're not already there and scroll down to the boot device section. Under this section, you will see a device called Flash, and depending on the version of Unraid, you may see a yellow exclamation point here. 
In newer versions, this could mean that the device currently has sharing enabled. Click on the flash device to be brought to its setting page. Under the SMB Security Settings section, we want to set Export to No. Doing so will turn off sharing of the USB device and its contents. If for some reason you do need access to the drive over the network, you can come back here and set it to Yes. If you do though, I highly recommend setting the security to private with specific user access. I will be covering how to set that up shortly when we go over securing your shares. With export set to no, click on apply to save the settings. Let's now move on to securing our individual shares. Before we actually set that up, we are going to first create a user that is not the root account that should be used for accessing our shares. This is important as you should really keep the account that is used to access your shares separate from the account that is used to access and make changes to your actual Unraid server. To do this, once again click on the Users tab at the top of the page. On the new page, click on Add User. Here you will create the user account, you can give it a description, and change its avatar. You'll also want to set a password here. This password should be different from your root account password and be at least 8 characters long, contain upper and lower case characters, should also have at least one number in it, and should also have at least one special character in it. Once all set with your password, click on Add. Now, let's look at locking down our shares. Click on the Shares tab at the top of the page. Depending on your version and where you are in your Unraid setup, you may or may not see some system created shares here. By default, a newly created share will have the export settings set to yes and the security settings set to public. Let's take a look at what these settings do. For export, you can either have it set to no, which means off, yes, which means on, and yes hidden, which means on but not advertised. For securing our Unraid server, you can set export to either yes or yes hidden here, with hidden being a bit more secure and that the share won't be directly advertised if the server is queried, but if the share name is known, it can still be accessed. I will be demonstrating how exactly a hidden share would work very shortly. For this setting, I recommend setting to yes hidden. For the security option, you have three options. Public, secure, and private. Public means access is wide open and anyone who connects to the share can add, change, or delete any of the files within that share. This includes anyone without a user account set up, which are oftentimes referred to as guests. Secure sets all users, including guests, as read-only. You then must set any user you want to be able to add, change, or delete files for that share manually. And finally, private prevents anyone from connecting to the share unless explicitly set up as having access for that share and you must set if they have read-only or read-write capabilities. This means if a user isn't set up for access on that share, they will not be able to even see the files stored on it. For this setting, I recommend setting it to private and limiting which accounts have read-write access. This means you'll need to make sure you set up a user account that can be granted read-write access. With your export and security settings put to how you want them, click on apply. With the security setting of private or secure, you'll be presented with a new section underneath that allows for you to assign access privileges to user accounts. Here you will also be reminded on how guest accounts are handled. You can set user accounts to either read only, read write, or if your security is set to private, no access. Just make sure to apply any changes you make at the end. Let's now go over how the different export and security settings are handled. I went ahead and created three shares. The first one is set to export in public, the second is set to export hidden with a security setting of secure, and the last one is set to export hidden with a security setting of private. I also have a single account that has read-only access to the second share and read-write capabilities on the third share. First, let's add the first share in Windows 10. We will add it as a network share and after we type in the IP address, you'll notice that share one is listed as an option. This is because for export, I left it as just yes and not yes hidden. You will also notice that share two and share three are not listed here. This is because they were set to hidden for the export setting. Finishing the network share adding process, you'll also notice that it was not prompted for any credentials. This is because this share is set to public. I'm also able to create, modify, and delete anything within this share as well. So as you can see, the default settings for a new share are not the most secure. Let's now take a look at the second share. This one is set up for export hidden, which means that it will not automatically show up when trying to add a share. This share also has its security set to secure. This means anyone connecting, including unauthenticated guests, are able to see files, but only users that are given read write access are allowed to create, modify, and delete files within the share. You'll notice I'm not prompted for a username or password when adding this share. This means in this example, I'm an unauthenticated guest and should not be able to create files, which we can see is blocked when I try. If I wanted to create or edit things, I would need to actually authenticate to this share. Finally, let's take a look at the third share. This one will also not show up when adding because it is set to export hidden, but because its security is set to private, no unauthenticated guests are allowed access. 
This will automatically trigger Windows to provide a login prompt for the share. Entering in the credentials for a valid user will allow access to the share. In this instance, my account is allowed read-write access, so I have full control of everything in the share. If the account was set to read only, then it would only be allowed to read the files in the share. One last thing you can do on Unraid itself is install the plugin called Fix Common Problems. While this isn't directly related to the security of your Unraid server, it can provide some helpful insight into misconfigurations that might be possible and even help you walk through the steps to correct them. You can set up the plugin to check at a certain interval, which is very helpful as well. I highly recommend checking it out. So far, we've taken several steps to help secure Unraid server, but there is something else you can do to help keep your data safe, and that is making sure you do not have any port forwarding set up on your home router that may be pushing unintended traffic sourced from the internet to your Unraid server, or honestly, anything in your home network for that matter. If you just recently set up Unraid or have not added any particular Docker containers or set up internet access to your Unraid server, then you most likely have not set up port forwarding. But it's still a good idea to keep in mind, and now is a great time to double check your port forwarding settings are as you expect them to be. How these settings are configured will depend on your router, but the concept is the same no matter the brand or model. With port forwarding, you configure your router to take any traffic destined to your public address that is destined to a specific port and forward it to a specific device on your home network. For example, all normal web browsing traffic will be destined to port 80 for HTTP or port 443 for HTTPS. That means when you're browsing google.com, your traffic is destined to a Google server on either port 80 or 443, depending on if it's a secure connection. With port forwarding on a home router, if you have a rule set up for port 80 destined to your Unraid server, then any traffic that hits your router from the internet will be redirected towards your Unraid server. While having internet traffic being redirected to your server does not inherently mean anything bad will happen to your server, it does open it up to the world where a malicious actor could try to gain access to it. Because of this, I strongly recommend not setting up port forwarding for remote access or management of your Unraid server or its shares. This includes port 80 for HTTP, port 443 for HTTPS, port 20 or 21 for FTP, port 22 for Telnet, port 23 for SSH, port 445 for SMB, and ports 111 and 2049, which are used for NFS. Again, this is just a recommendation, but you should really consider if you need remote access over the internet to your server. Instead, I would encourage you to look into some sort of VPN solution to gain access to your server and files from over the internet. Some routers actually support setting up a VPN right on them. And there are also Docker containers available as well to provide VPN services. There are additional port numbers that can be used outside of what I mentioned, and you should take a look at and verify every port forwarding rule that may be set up on your router. Port numbers can range between 0 and 65,535, with port 0 through 1023 being defined as well-known ports. Ports between 1024 and 49,151 are known as registered ports, and ports 49,152 to 65,535 are known as dynamic ports. While well-known and registered port numbers are typically used for defined services, they don't necessarily have to serve that function. But typically, a quick Google search will tell you what those port numbers are normally used for. For me, I know that the only traffic source from the internet I want in is Plex. So I have a single port forwarding rule for port 32400, which gets redirected to my Unraid server. If you're having trouble figuring out how to check your port forwarding settings, a quick Google search for how to set up port forwarding on, followed by your router model at the end, should be enough to get you the documentation you need. Something else to verify while logged into your router is whether or not you have your Unraid server or other computer on your network set up as a DMZ host. On a home router, the DMZ host setting typically means that any traffic sourced from the internet that is destined to the router will automatically be forwarded to that device. As you can imagine, this is worse than having a few wrong ports being forwarded as it's the same thing as having every single port forwarded. My suggestion is to never have any device set as a DMZ host unless you absolutely need to and understand why you need a DMZ host. Again, this setting location will depend on your router model. If you're having trouble finding it, a Google search for DMZ host followed by your router model should be enough to get you the information for your specific router. One last thing you should consider doing while logged into your router is making sure that the router is not using a default password or one that is easily guessable. You can use the same recommendation for passwords mentioned earlier for Unraid on your home router as well. If you need assistance finding this setting, a Google search for how to change password on followed by your router model should be enough to get you the information on how to change the password. There are several other things you can do to help secure your home router for both your Unraid server as well as any of the other devices on your network. But that's a bit too much for this video. If you would like for me to cover more in another video, make sure to let me know in the comments below so I can gauge interest. As a reminder, this video was not intended to be an end-all for securing your Unraid server. 
If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the video perform better within the YouTube algorithm. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release new tech videos just like this one. Thank you for watching.